Hey guys, welcome to Salute Game Off. No! Yeah, thanks for joining me today, everybody. This is going to be a little compilation video of the things I picked up at the end of 2023. And I essentially hit about three, I think it was three or maybe two different antique stores. And essentially, I what I do is when I drive around for, for, for work, I will essentially look for any antique store that's near me. I don't have, there's no comic shops. There's only really antique stores, not even flea markets. So it, it definitely would only be um, antique stores. So I'll find them on my way, sort of map them out. Or as I'm driving, I almost, you know, break my neck trying to turn and see a, a building that says open on it, that big flag. And it'll say, you know, something on it that, that, that says antiques or, or something that'll make me want to make sure my way back through, I'll stop. And, uh, Probably six months ago, I was driving through uh, one of the towns, and I saw this busted up looking building that um, I thought was just abandoned. But when I drove past on the way back six months ago, it said antiques. And I said, wow, that looks a little, little shaky or shady of a place to go to. Uh, but I did some recent travels over uh, before Christmas and had a chance to stop and went in. And the, the place was a wooden building. Um, old guy working there, you know, long beard, gray beard. Um, but, uh, you know, very nice guy. But when I walked in, I didn't know if they were going to pull out a gun or if it was going to be uh, a treasure find. So it ended up being a treasure find. So I was really happy with that. Like I said, the guy who owned it was a really cool guy. Uh, so I went in and he had probably, uh, he had like rows of various antiques and just the place was filled, but he, um, he had like a whole section of comic books and a lot of them were bagged and boarded. They weren't just thrown in there. They, they weren't in the best of shape. Some of them, but other ones were in, you know, I, let's put it this way. They were, they were reasonably shaped for what the outside of the building looked. So I was kind of happy with what I found. Um, some of them aren't in great shape, but some of them, some of them are. Um, so let me go ahead and get to it. But again, this was a wooden looked like a building from the wet old Western uh, movies you would see, but uh, happened to be some pretty decent comics in there. So first one I got was Superman Legacy number one. Now I've had this before in a newsstand version. This is the free comic book version, um, but I wanted to read the story. I know this year in 2024, um, I have goals of books I want to pick up, but also a goal is going to be to read some books. So this may be one I read. But anyway, I, I believe this is the storyline that will um, will be in uh, the James Gunn Superman Legacy uh, movie that's supposed to be coming out. So again, this is this is what we may see on the screen or some aspect of it. So I do want to read this to to know more about it. I know it has something to do with the fact that uh, Superman is essentially dying throughout this run. It's a short run, uh, but something with the the sun is uh, the sun's radiation is causing him to get stronger, but also to die. Um, and he knows that. So that's that's a different take on Superman. So I think that's going to be pretty pretty cool to to read. And, and see how they might put that on the screen. But um, nicely drawn cover. It's kind of beat up, but hey, good reader book. Second one and third one are, these are off-the-wall Eclipse books. They're called Adolescent Radioactive Black Belt Hamsters. And number one from, uh, this is from, uh, I can't remember the name of this one, Parody Press. Uh, so, they took this was supposed to be some type of uh, some type of uh, take from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So this is just a, a flat out uh, steal of that type of a of a character portrayal. But I thought it was I thought these were valuable. I thought I saw them on um, on a couple of the YouTube videos that these things were valuable. So I picked them up and I checked, and they're really not worth a ton, but probably a stupid read. But a definitely a cool 80s, 90s read, um, given some of these characters that they, you know, try to, to try to rip off um, that became popular. So um, maybe a cool read. But again, when I'm digging, I don't always have cell phone service. So if I see something I think I saw on Lords of the Long Box or Comic Tom or you name it, I'll probably pick it up just in case uh, it has a, has a value because all these books were a dollar. Uh, another one I got, I don't think it has a ton of value, but it's a cool, cool cover. Uh, this is a Marvel collector edition of the X-Men. It's the Pizza Hut 
version. This must have been given out at various Pizza Huts throughout the 90s. Great uh, Wolverine cover in his yellow and blue suit that we'll be seeing in a few months here, hopefully. Uh, but Gravix, again, I thought this might have been one that had some value in it, but doesn't. This next one is one I pass over all the time. There's a whole stack of these, and he had a whole stack of them there at this antique store. But I usually pass these up. I pass up the Marvel ones as well, the who's who of the comic world. I don't really think any of these have real value in them. But why does this one have value? Well, let me show you where the value comes in on this particular book. As you go through the pages, it shows you all the various characters. And one of them that was drawn in here, if I could quickly find it before the video runs out, would be great. But it is. And these aren't bad if you want to read more information about the various characters. But I usually know that I'm looking for keys when I'm hunting. So therefore, I don't um, always I don't have a need to grab these. Uh, but I knew this one had the particular character or artist that drew in here. And again, I'm not going to find. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll hopefully find this one. This is a. There it is. We have Dolphin. Those of you saw I have a showcase with the Dolphin on the cover. But this is a Dave Stevens drawing inside here. Um, not a ton of value, maybe a couple dollars, but it's good if you're a Dave Stevens collector, which I am, especially with his uh, female art that he does, his covers. And this one was a cool find now that I know that it had um, had a nice Dave Stevens art inside of it. This is Who's Who, September 85. So I have the first appearance of Dolphin, found that earlier this year. Um, a showcase, I think it's 79, a nice green cover with dolphin on it, but it was cool to get this pick up for my Dave Stevens collection. The next, let's call them the next five are the main man, my favorite DC character after Batman, the man that will propel the James Gunn universe to new heights. The man who his first appearance will soon be in the same echelon of Deadpool and Harley Quinn and Dazzler, as we've all seen, Dazzler 9.8 is now incredibly expensive for Taylor Swift rumors only. The character's not even in a movie yet. And even if, if they're in the movie, they won't be in for, for more than one or two movies. And Lobo, Lobo will be probably a stalwart in the DC Universe moving forward. He's a great character. Um, he's, you know, wisecracking, which is what Deadpool is. Uh, he has that ferocity of, of Wolverine. Um, I just think he's someone that they will use quite often in the new DC universe. And I found this is a newsstand version. I do have a direct version of this in a better grade. But I figured, again, I'm going to read some books this year. And I got to go back and reread the Lobo, the miniseries. This one was one of four. And we found number two. Newsstand. We found number three. And we found number four. Now, one of these wasn't in really good shape. Uh, but again, like I said, these are all reader copies. The only one that's that I care to have is Lobo number one, because this is just a cool, iconic cover. Uh, but again, the rest of these are just for reading purposes. And then the last one is going to be Lobo's Back. This was um, another, sh another volume of Lobo with a cool cover of uh, his biker jacket and his signature line of, you know, bite me. Uh, but uh, cool book. And again, another one I may read, but I'm definitely going to try to get back and finish up this Lobo 1 to 4 here to get some more backstory on Lobo or re remember what I did read. But the big find at this antique store was something I didn't think I would find in this type of a place, but it is Amazing Spider-Man number 607. I had recently shown this on my Instagram page, but I wanted to uh, give some more background. But this is the newsstand version. This is Adam, or excuse me, J. Scott Campbell, black cat cover. This is uh, hard to find, especially in the newsstand. And to find it where I did was pretty remarkable. So I'm quite happy with this find. This is easily a $100 book. Um, has some spine spine ticks that I don't think I can get out. The rest of it looks pretty decent. Um, but again, one I didn't think I'd find at the store I was at, at this antique store. It was just you know, it didn't look like a place that would have what I found. So pretty cool. I think I paid 10 bucks for all that. 
So you can't beat that. Next antique store I went to, it's it's basically a comic store inside an antique shop. The guy was a collector years ago. I found uh, my Hulk 377 third print there. Uh, I found a lot of cool books. The guy's super nice. He has great uh, a great inventory. They're not all new books, but he keeps coming up with dollar books. I get to go through and find all kind of neat stuff. And he had just got a new collection in, and he let me go through it. And and that's how I found this uh, the uh, Hulk 377. But a couple other books I got from that antique store are Young Avengers number. This is number four. Nice. This is a Kang cover. That's the only uh, key to this significance. And now with Kang. Uh, Jonathan Majors getting fired by Disney. This is probably not going to be worth much any further, but it was a cool cover to grab. I think this was a buck or two. Um, next one is Infinity Gauntlet 4. Great cover with Thanos uh, saying, come and get me. Not in the greatest grade, but again, if I could find that, the, I do have the, the trade paperback for Infinity Gauntlet to read, um, but this was a great storyline, uh, obviously, when I was a kid in the 90s and uh, Ron Ron Lim and some other greats back in the day drew these and uh, great storyline. So as I find them in the wild, I'm going to try to put together the collection of Infinity Gauntlet uh, 1 to 6. I do have number 1, not in great grade. Number 4 here, not in great grade. But again, just to have them all would be cool. Um, next is Spider-Man 13. Love this cover. This was homage. I don't know how many times I have a copy of this already in newsstand graded. And I have, I think, a another one in newsstand. Or I have a direct rated, a newsstand ungraded, and now another new or another direct, but it's in decent grade and probably an easy one to flip. Um, next book I got was a Incredible Hulk 245. This is the first appearance of Moonstone. Had it once before, uh, sold it on eBay, saw it there, figured I'd grab it. Another book that I have graded in a 9.6, but when you see the first uh, artwork at Marvel. For Todd McFarlane, you grab it, even though it's pretty beat up. Uh, but again, another one to read, should I want to, to have a raw copy to go with my graded copy so I can get and read this one. Um, the next one, another Hulk book, Hulk 234. This is the first appearance of Quasar. So I had this earlier in the year, sold it on eBay, and I need to have a physical copy. I can't just say I had it for that Marvel Series 3 game we're all going to be playing soon so there's the first appearance of quasar now i'm not sure if this particular book is going to go um having to do with our game we're playing but i figured i might as well grab it this is captain america 333 this is the first appearance of john walker as the fourth captain america i don't necessarily think this is going to be a key uh for the for our game but it's definitely a key book that has some value and i didn't get it for very much um, I do have the first appearance of John Walker, but this is the first time John Walker was Captain America. So pretty cool there. Um, next book is going to be helpful in the game. This is Captain America number 360. This is the second cameo of Crossbones. Now, he had a cameo before this, and he has a full appearance on the cover of another book in this Captain America run. But this happens to be the money book. I'm not sure why. It's a cameo. but. It's not in the greatest shape, but again, what I got all these books for, um, that Hulk 377 will cover most of that, whereas some of these will, you know, I almost will triple my money on what I spent. So that's why I love going there. The guy's super nice. He's trying to get rid of his collection as he buys these collections and, you know, helps helps out the local collector. Um, the next one is Amazing Spider-Man 16, the King Size Annual number 16. This is the first appearance of Photon who was recently in the Captain Marvel, um, or excuse me, the Marvel's movie. So another point for the for the game. Next one, annual number two for the New Mutants. This is Psylocke's first appearance. This book is beat up pretty good. Could have bought it for $35 to $40 at another comic store. I chose because I'm not a care, uh, fan of the, not, not that I'm not a fan of the character. I just don't care to have, a high grade of the first appearance. I just wanted a cheap copy to try to win the game. We'll see. I don't know if I'll win the game, but uh, at least we got a chance as we find these. Um, next one is Spectacular Spider-Man number 90. Have this graded, wanted a reader copy. Um, I have all the first appearances of the black suit. 
This is just one to be a reader copy or also to go with my spectacular Spider-Man run. Um, because I have the first 100, 101 spectacular Spider-Mans, some of them are graded. So that's why I wanted to get them all as many as I can raw for that particular collection. Even though I have them all now, like I'm saying, just to just to have them all raw in one short box would be great and leave my graded one hanging where it does. Um, next book is Daredevil 183. This is the one of the first uh, battle between Punisher and Daredevil. Great copy. Have a near mint one. This one is pretty beat up. This is, we'll call this the reader copy to read the story. Check out the artwork in here because this is Frank Miller. So this is definitely a, a cool book to, uh, to pick up to be able to read through and another nicer copy I have the display so so not too shabby okay and the last book i got from that antique store is x-men number 166 this is the first appearance of lockheed he's unnamed until two issues later but again i think this will come in handy for the um for the game it's also i didn't pay much for it i think a buck for two, so for the value, if I needed to flip it, not too shabby. Um, and I forgot I did go to three antique stores, so there's my third um, pickups are here. Um, and what these pickups are, so that's all I got at the other store. Um, there's a local antique shop that had closed down and was bought by somebody else, happened to be somebody I knew. And I spoke to that person and said, hey, I can help you price out some of the comics um, whenever you open back up. You know, I know there's a there was tons and tons of long boxes in this particular antique store this is a huge store tons of long boxes probably 25 long boxes that that hadn't been gone through yet there was plenty of uh short boxes boxes all through that that place and i and i spent probably two or three days not in a row but basically two three maybe four days going through all those comics and still not done yet but i went through and after the first day, I found a couple that I, I wanted and he just gave them to me for helping him out. And, and again, we worked out a deal where, the you know, I get some type of a discount, on the ones that I want to buy. And I definitely will be talking to friends and family who are interested in comics and showing them what he has. And, and he's going to give them a deal as well. But uh, the first one I found, I need a couple copies of it, was Darkwing Duck number one. This is a pricey uh, Disney comic. Uh, this one is newsstand. It's in pretty high grade. Um, there might be a few little nicks here and there, but don't find this very often. At least I have yet to find this in the wild, but he had three or four copies all newsstand. So gave me that one. The next one is Blade number one. I've been trying to buy this for I don't know how long through eBay at various comic shows. I just wanted this 90s cover. I... I'm not a Blade fan, but I was definitely a fan of the movie with Wesley, Wesley Snipes back in the day, and I didn't even know there was a comic. Um, I, I'm not into maybe maybe one day I'll find uh, Tomb of Dracula number nine, um, but you know until then this was the one I wanted just because this was the Blade I knew from from the '90s from those from the movie. And had I known there was a book or comic back then, I probably would have bought it. But I'm happy to have this one in. And find it finally so he gave those two to me and then after i went through a bunch more a couple days later i put together a little small stack of comics that i wanted and we worked at a nice little deal for them and there's still more to go through but these are the ones i picked up and again if you know me you know why i picked this book up this is one it's a michael turner cover great artist who passed too soon just like dave stevens power girl is uh uh, compelling as a female character when it comes to her um, her looks, we'll say. And some people know how to draw her well, and Michael Turner definitely does. So that one's not worth a ton, but I'll gladly um, put this in the collection. Next one is similar to Blade, one that I thought I would find in a while, tried to pick up, didn't. We have Toxic Avenger number one in newsstand. This is a uh, book that has a movie coming out this year with Peter Dinklage. Um, not sure if there's going to be value. I didn't, I didn't buy it for the speculation. I just bought it for the fact that it's a 90s book that, you know, I just remember from, from back then. So glad to have it. Cool cover. Um, you know, 
interesting character. Reminds me of the of the character in RoboCop. Towards the end, RoboCop ran over a guy or knocked a guy into a toxic sludge. He be, he looked like Toxic Avenger, which is I think where they got the idea from. And then RoboCop ran him over with his car and he splattered everywhere, which is pretty cool. But um, that's what Toxic Avenger reminds me of. Uh, next one I picked up, Marvel Spotlight 28, the first uh, solo Moon Knight storyline. First appearance was in uh, Werewolf by Night, number 29, I think it was. And this was his first solo story. So pick this one up. It has this crease right down the middle of it. I think this is one of those books that, you know, they used to bend books back in the day. Um, they would cut off the top for the books that didn't sell. They would bend them when they put them together in rubber band to deliver them to different stores and shops. And this one had some, we'll call it battle damage from that. I pressed some of it out, but you can still see it. But again, it's a good, it's a decent copy. Maybe it's a 6 um, but it's not one that you see that often. Next one I got for some DCU speculation. This is Forever People, number one. My least favorite artist, Jack Kirby. Again, he's iconic. I'm not going to take that away from him. I just prefer some other artists. But this is the first full appearance of Dark Side. His other appearance, or his first cameo, is in, uh, it's... It's a uh, it's a Superman title. I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, it'll come to me here later on. But um, Superman's friend Jimmy Olsen, I think, is the name of the, of the comic. Uh, but Dark Side's in this and that one. But this is his first full appearance in the Forever People number one. And doesn't hurt for it to be a Kirby uh, cover, as many people love Kirby. So if Dark Side does come back through the DC U with James Gunn. There's definitely some some growth potential for that book, and James Gunn maybe will do him better than we saw in the previous iteration. And the last book I got, and this is a pretty big one, this is Blue Beetle number one. Now, I did have the first appearance of Blue Beetle, which came in Captain Adam 83, found it at the same comic shop. I bought that early in or late in 2022, sold that based on the Blue Beetle spec. That spec came and went. This is not the first appearance of Blue Beetle. Um, there's actually three Blue Beetles. The first one is from the 30s and 40s. The second one was 19, I think, 60, 66 in the Catham Adam book. And that's Ted Cord, who is this Blue Beetle here. This is his first uh, ongoing, you know, unlimited ongoing series. But the reason this book does have some value is it's the first appearance of the question who's down here. So in the Captain Adam comic it's charleston as well you'll see captain adam captain adam up here and the blue beetles down here so in this book you got blue beetle up here and the question down here so this book does have some value and it's not because of the blue beetle even though it's his first um ongoing um storylines probably volume three of blue beetle but it is the first appearance of the question who maybe james gonna use him i don't know but this was in a pretty good copy i think the pages are nice and white so cool book to have. I know I like the Blue Beetle. I like the movie. Many people did not. But um, when you come across these as I'm digging through all these long boxes, I had to grab it and he worked out a great deal for me. So that's what we got this this at the end of 2023. Ton of books. Um, enjoyed all the hunting I did, especially through that comic store or excuse me, the antique store that was recently bought by a friend of mine. I found so much cool stuff in there. Um, but. Let me know what you think. Which one was the best find I had? Was it the uh, Amazing Spider-Man 607? Or was it the Blue Beetle number one or from Charleston? So let me know. Or maybe it's Moon Knight. I don't know. But you tell me. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And we will see you on the next unboxing, interview, or just show-off video. Looking forward to it. Y'all take care. Have a great 2024. Thank you.